Recently, there was a new study out from the journal Neurology that says a lack of sleep can actually affect the size of our brains and the capacity of how we are able to use them. To help us better understand this study and the sleep's effect on our brains, on our bodies, Dr. James Bradley, Loveless Medical Group Sleep Specialist. Dr. Bradley, Hi. welcome back. It's good to see you. Hey, thanks for having me. Okay, let's talk about this. This study came out and said not only can a lack of sleep cause all these other health problems that we've seen before, weight gain, uh, irritation, all this, but it affects the size of our brains. How is that? You know, uh, basically the development or the advance of sleep medicine is only really taken, taken uh, present in the last two decades. And so they've done a lot of studies and what this study looked at, it was a bunch of 150 people. It looked at their sleep, sleep traits, how they slept. It looked at their MRI of the brain at the, at the first start of the study. Mm -hmm. And three and a half years later, it looked at their MRI, MRI of the brain too. Long-term study. Long-term study. And what it showed the, those that lacked sleep, that didn't get good sufficient sleep, had 30% loss of brain structure and volume. No kidding. So what does that do then, let's say, in our daily lives? Does it affect memory, uh, cognitive thinking and reasoning and all that? Well, what ha we don't know if it's a chicken or the egg. We know that with normal aging, you lose brain volume. Okay. And so it, it did show in this study that those that had lack of sleep had, had more brain loss, but more study needs to be done on on uh, is, it, is it just the natural aging or is it sleep deprivation? Bottom line, what it sounds like is this study backs up what a lot of other studies have said and probably what you talk to people about, that sleep is extremely important for us in our health. Oh, extremely important. If you have sleep, sleep uh, if you don't get enough sleep, it can cause uh, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, irritation. I know that if I'm on call, I get called all, hmm. all night long, you don't want to talk to me in the morning. Sure. I mean, people get <laughs> irritated, depressed, yeah. all kinds of, uh, of health concerns. Okay. So, it, so many people I know, uh, particularly people who work here in the morning and just a, a lot of people, they say, I'm having trouble sleeping, right? What do you do about it? Well, you know, if you need to uh, get, get a, a good sleep diary, a good history. Is it diet? How do you exercise? What leads into sleep? Uh, when you don't sleep well in your bed, do you get out of bed? Do you do all this electronic stuff? I mean, all these people, everyone has these things. Yeah, I hear those are horrible in these the bedroom. These are horrible. Yeah. iPads, iPods, these these smartphones. The blue light that's emanated uh -huh. from this goes through your eye into the retina. It decreases melatonin, which is uh, allows us to sleep. So the higher it is, you sleep. But when you get the blue light from these devices, it lowers that hormone and then you can't sleep. And so the, it's kind of a catch 22. I can't sleep. Let me just futz around uh -huh. a little bit with a, with a computer or, or a laptop and it's worsening your sleep. Okay. Cause I know some people say, Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm going to go lay in bed. I'm going to try to relax, but I'm going to check some email or play a game on my phone. Correct. Horrible idea. Horrible idea. Okay. Yeah. Um, when do you think, is it time? Maybe I want to go see someone like yourself or I want to go see a doctor because I'm not sleeping so well. Well, if you have disrupted sleep where the next day you're too tired to perform your task at work, you have your drowsy uh, going to work, driving. Uh, if you have health concerns, then certainly you need to see your doctor or a sleep specialist uh, that, can go, that can kind of fine tune your diet, exercise, what you're doing. Um, you know, and there's certain techniques besides medications that can allow one to sleep better. Um, people talk about counting sheep. Yeah, but does that work? It works, but what you need to do is some mundane task to allow you to get more sleepy. Like, you don't want to try something with me? Mm -hmm. A to Z, pick, uh, if you uh, choose an animal for each letter. Okay. A, ant. Uh, B, um, um, bear. Uh, bear. Bear. Bear or bat. C, okay. cat. C. D, dog. C, do you feel a bit more tired? It takes your mind off of Yeah, everything. it takes your mind off stuff. People okay. also have lists that they have in their head and they ruminate. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a, a tablet by your bed and you write stuff down, mm -hmm. that allows you to get it out of your brain and and not think about it. But actually use pencil and paper. Don't use the iPad because cool. of the light. <laughs> no, don't good. think, okay, I'm going to write stuff no, down. I'm going to type it in my exactly notes. Exactly right, right. Um, okay, real quick. Sleep medicine, particularly over-the-counter stuff or melatonin, you like it, you don't like it? I don't. Uh, over-the-counter uh, Benadryl, melatonin is great. It's okay. normally uh, producing hormone in the body. So taking three to six milligrams every night before bed will help you. Um, but as far as sleep medications, the Ambien and Valium and benzodiazepines and, and the, strong opi, op, the strong stuff needs to be relegated for people that fail all these other behavioral things. And I think I, I see a lot of elderly with insomnia and they've been on these 
these medications for years and they haven't tried these other coping mechanisms that will allow them not to be uh, hanging on to their pills. Okay. Good advice. Dr. James Bradley, thank you for sharing that. You want to find out more about what he does in this sleep study, you can head to our website at krqe.com. Come back soon, Doc. Hi, sure. Okay, take 29. Stick around. We'll be right back.